Aubrey here from Midas Touch Media where everything that you touch turns to gold. So today we're gonna get into my DIY minivan camper conversions. I built this entire van pretty much by myself and pretty much for free. One of the best things about this conversion is that it sleeps two people. So as you're gonna see, there's a lot of space to move around, but the way that I designed the project is that it's actually gonna be able to sleep not only me, but my partner as well. Everything that you're gonna be looking at today is recycled, I found on the side of the road. If you guys are looking to build this DIY minivan camper conversion for yourself at home, I have a how-to three-part video series and it's gonna take you through step-by-step. Step. It has measurements, it has where I found the materials and how much I spent. So you guys can fact check me that everything that I did was free. There is no harm to the van itself. Everything can be reversed and I can put back in the seats at any time. With that being said, let's get into it. accurate feel for space this is a 2010 Chrysler town and country and I am five foot ten so as you can see I've got a lot of room here I use this to kind of chill I have a bean bag that I kind of put in and out of here but it's just really super duper spacious if I'm in a random city and I'm trying to get changed in the middle of the street I've got tons of space back here the seating space is definitely wide enough for me to lie around I've had friends also sleep on the ground here. Point of view for this end. Like I said, I'm 5'10". Here's the bed. And back here is the kitchen, but we'll get into that later. Just so you guys can kind of get the feel. It's pretty, it's really spacious. I built it with that in mind. I liked having this open floor plan because I didn't want to be bogged down by seating. I didn't know what I would was gonna need and honestly it's proven really successful for me I also have a dog but this space is also conducive for her like I said I usually have a beanbag chair that I'll keep back here and she'll rest on there she comes up on the bed it's a lot of room for her to be able to stretch her legs and walk around I've got my oars hanging up um, usually there's a big old canoe strapped to the top of this got my oars my hiking sticks on either side also you'll notice that I have these super cute curtains they are honestly the most useful thing in the world so they're really lightweight you can use them peek right out Ta-da! <laughs> got them at salvation army just kind of cut them up they're identical from this side to this side as well cool thing about them though is that they're thin enough that i can just roll down these windows up here leave it a crack and this almost acts like a bug net so that's really cool for like mosquitoes and now i'll show you guys what's under my bed so I have tons of storage underneath the bed um, for my clothes. I've got a few different bins that I thought fit best under there. See, look at all of that. Pretty freaking awesome. And just to give you an idea of how deep back that goes, my easel, how far back it is. Super deep. I can fit all the way in there. <laughs> this part right here, which you'll see in one of my other videos, this is gonna convert into a full-size bed. However, I've also been able to turn this into some storage underneath. It's just these cute little zip pockets that I got from the dollar store. Um, usually I like to keep like bras and underwear kind of in this section, and I keep my regular clothes under here. One priority for me during this build was being able to maintain access to the stow and go seating underneath the van. So I actually took out those seats and I left these huge cavities underneath where I'm able to utilize storage. So as you can tell, this floor was built at kind of a raise. So we've got some sandals under here, but this rug actually comes out and I just like to hang it right here, boom. And you'll be able to see that I have access still to the stow and go seating and underneath I've got all of my camping gear and it's super deep honestly I can stick my arms see how deep that goes all the way in there and it's been instrumental in holding things that I don't necessarily need access to every time I travel so water pouches my backpack survival gear um, I've got my sleeping bags all kinds of good stuff and I was able to maintain it not only on this side but over there as well this is a less aesthetic side this part is again instrumental into converting that bed into a double but if I pull that out you'll see the back of all my stuff push this forward I'm still able to access it from this point 
And this is where I keep a lot of Onyx's goods. Um, some extra water bottles. Because it's not the easiest thing in the world to access, I just don't put things that I need every single day. However, when I need it, it's right there. My luxury kitchen. <laughs> that you're gonna notice is the sink it does have a hole drilled in it um and i do have a waste bin down here but i don't currently have anything attached just because i haven't really found a need for it i bought this super awesome pop-up sink at walmart literally all you have to do is push one two and it's a whole sink it's got a drain in here you just turn it and the water goes down so because i'm usually in rural locations um, I'm just able to pop that baby open and do my dishes and I don't even need to go inside of the van typically. Like that. And it stores thin. Next thing you're going to notice is this water pump. I actually got this top part here at uh, Goodwill. So it cost me like $2 or something like that. And these gallons are, first of all, A, they're refillable. And B, you can buy them at any grocery store if you don't have a reliable fresh water source. I do have electricity. However, I just didn't feel like water was one of those things that I needed an electric pump for. So I just opted for a good old push handle and I'll show you how that works. Here's my little sink. This I can take out at any time. I'm just gonna leave it in here for the video. You just pop this little cap off that keeps it from running while you're driving. And you push on this little handle here and you'll see water just comes out at a good constant pace and it's super easy when you're done cap goes on water comes out let's just stick with the sink for a minute here i've got my handy dandy scrubber for dishes and you'll notice this, this has all of my toiletries in it behind there is a hidden dish soap but this comes right off this just velcro to the bottom and in here i've got all of my conditioner shampoo face lotion toothpaste um Dove body spray. These are actually my bar shampoo and conditioner, so those are pretty cool, especially when you're traveling. And when I'm done, it just sticks right back on there. Over here, I've just got, you know, condiments, my lighter, knife, emergency, gotta keep that immune system up. My coffee station, if you guys are interested in a video on that, I'll show you guys how I make coffee in the van. Now let's take it under the sink here. So I already talked about, this is where um, my wastewater would go if it was connected. First thing that you're gonna see here is that these flip up. So my idea with this was to have a string, which I haven't installed yet, to go from this handle up to the top so it can hold up as additional counter space. So you'll see it kind of gives me like a little island here. Um, but for the time being, because I don't have that set up, just gonna flip it up here. This is a gray water tank. Because I don't currently have a need for gray water, this is the home for my shower bag. I mentioned briefly how I shower in the minivan in one of my other adventure videos, but if that's another thing that you guys are interested in knowing how I do, comment below and I'll do a video on that next. So you probably noticed this guy over here. This actually converts into our grill. So that is where we do uh, pretty much the majority of our cooking when we don't build a fire. And it opens up into a really, really nice grill. Again, I didn't want to hurt the van at all, so it was important for me to have access to this little flashlight that houses here. So when I take this out, I can still just turn around, boop, grab that, and slide it back in. Next, if we go this way, you're going to find another island connection, if you want it. That's going to flip up. And this is where we keep our food. So kind of bare, because we get hungry. But you know, nuts, graham crackers, cashew bars, Chase's junk food drawer, <laughs> lots of snacks, pretzels, Cheetos, coconut oil, and essential. And then if we pull this all the way out, we have access to the bottom here. So this is where we house our dishes. Uh, this is more than enough space for us. We've got about five plates, I would say, in there. Some bowls for storage. And over here on the side is where we keep our pots and pans. So same old, same old cutting board and a strainer. Up in here, you'll notice, however, I've got some lighter fluid for fires, some rope, and this is the propane that's gonna go to this grill over here. So all of it fits really nicely underneath the counter here. Now you're probably wondering, how do you have a kitchen with no refrigerator? <laughs> and that's where we get into the front seat here. So the front seat is going to house 
my handy dandy cooler. So I had to take out the center console and um, just little plastic parts over here. And you're gonna see this big, really, really nice cooler. This is one of the coolers that allows you to have ice and it stays cool for five days. Mm, kind of works for five days. It depends on how full your cooler is. When it's super duper packed, I can definitely see five days. But typically we get around like three, four, but we also open it up and cook a lot um, when we're out and about. So I'll show you how that opens up. One here, one here, and it's pretty deep. We got the Ozark Trail. We did a little bit of research between this one and the Yeti. Um, again, I'm super cheap, so price point for the Ozark Trail was definitely for me. Also, I've got a lot of other Walmart Ozark Trail products and I absolutely love them. So that turned out well. Other thing that you're going to notice is down here, I have this white bin, so I call this like my tech box. <laughs> I've got some batteries for the um, fan over there, and I've got some converters. I'm going to get into another video how I do electricity in the van. It's super easy. I bought this at Walmart for like 40 bucks, not even. Slides under here. And uh, I've got my power source over on the other side, so if you guys want to see that, like comment subscribe let me know what you're most interested in seeing if there's anything that you saw in the video that i didn't run over let me know a quick walkthrough of my free DIY minivan camper conversion. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't go travel or that you need this humongous RV. There's a lot of benefits to being in a minivan. You can definitely do it super cheap. You can do it super easy. And if you need to, you can do it by yourself. So get out there, go adventure. Uh, let me know where you guys go in your DIY converted minivans. I'll see you next time. Bye.